Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I am Saida Salim and today I decide untuk ceritakan you know, another horror story of mine uh, in which happened dekat rumah I sendiri masa dekat Switzerland dulu because ramai juga yang request untuk kongsi lagi cerita so saya dah decide untuk kongsi cerita ini kerana ramai orang bertanya di, dekat Europe mana ada hantu and everything you're wrong dekat mana-mana tempat di dunia ni pun ada uh, bad spirits uh, you know ghosts and everything so I decided to share one of my scariest story kind of like scariest based story in my life okay. basically it starts off uh, as you guys know, dulu saya dah lahir dekat Switzerland dan saya dah dibesarkan dekat uh, negara Swiss selama 15 tahun so selama 15 tahun tu lah uh, banyak experience saya dah berkenaan benda-benda macam ni so uh, satu story yang saya rasa antara yang paling scary adalah story rumah saya dah sendiri uh, seperti anda tahu, mungkin zaman-zaman dulu kalau dekat luar negara kita punya tanah ni adalah tanah pembunuhan tanah peperangan kan because kita pun border dengan Germany and kita border dengan France, kita border dengan Italy and border dengan uh, Liechtenstein. So basically dalam negara kita tu banyak berlaku especially against Nazis and everything, orang Yahudi dengan Nazis punya history lah dekat dalam dalam that area. So during that time, saya stay dekat Zurich. It's the main capital city of Switzerland. We were living in an apartment and that apartment apparently has four to five floors. So kita duduk dekat paling bawah sekali. So kita punya floor adalah yang paling bawah. Okay, so the thing is, uh, sistem dekat sana dengan sistem dekat Malaysia memang tak sama. So bermakna kita kalau nak cuci baju, kita nak ambil barang storeroom semua dekat basement bawah. Okay, so cerita dia sebenarnya ni basement bawah ni lah yang paling scary dan paling creepy. In this apartment, tanah dia pun boleh dikatakan tak berapa suci. Kalau kita pergi sana, kita akan rasa macam the environment there is quite cold. Dia bukan dalam segi cuaca sejuk tapi the feeling, uh, the feeling and orang yang mungkin pernah experience benda macam ni dia boleh faham lah. Kalau dekat Malaysia kita mungkin tak berapa rasa tapi dekat sana kita boleh rasa ialah tempat yang di mana orang banyak kena bunuh, tempat di mana orang yang banyak uh, apa dia punya roh dia tak tenteram, full of hate, hatred you know. So when a spirit dies full of hatred, basically the whole like spirit tu akan ganggu orang dalam segi membalas dendam. Kata Malaysia dengan Europe bagi Saida personally Europe punya spirits are more dangerous compared to Malaysia because Malaysia nampak you know punti yang nak kan dan you nampak pucung. Mereka ni berasaskan belaan orang dan belaan jin dan sebagainya. Tapi bagi saya di negara sana punca mereka mati disebabkan mereka mati dalam keadaan kejam. Dan bukan yang mati accident macam dekat Malaysia tepi jalan. But this one mati dibunuh, di diseksa, dipotong kepala, di disembelih dan sebagainya dan bagai jenis that's really really scary for me, which is not not fair untuk mereka juga kan. So that apartment kita ada tiga bilik and my brother stays bilik yang paling hujung sekali. His room yang paling banyak uh, experience dengan benda-benda macam ni. So he keeps telling me after two years or something. He keeps telling me that saya dah waktu malam ada ke lari-lari dekat hallway. I said no. Kenapa asyik ada budak lari dekat hallway? And then dia kata setiap malam dia kata ada macam macam bunyi tapak kaki budak tengah lari kan dekat hallway tu. Dung 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 macam itu ketawa. Of course our family were suspicious lah kan. Siapa budak ni because it wasn't me. Budak tu datang tarik selimut dia, geli-gelikan kaki dia dengan tangan seju. And then boleh letak tangan dekat muka. He was always creeped out. And honestly saying, any family members kita dari Malaysia, we bring them uh, to Switzerland untuk stay. All of my family members tu memang tak boleh stay in that room. Most of them akan lari keluar, ada yang takkan bercerita. They can't explain what happened. Like my arwah atuk, you know, my arwah atuk one, and then also my grandma, my uncle. Orang-orang Malaysia or even my brother's friends yang duduk dalam bilik tu, they all experience things that they aren't able to explain. I tak pernah experience anything like that in inside of the house itself. But my brother claims and a couple of his friends claim that what they saw in the room is basically seorang padri daripada zaman dulu seorang padri daripada zaman dulu 
yang betul-betul berpakaian coklat, dark coklat dengan tali and then like a hoodie, you know. I'll insert a picture. Uh, lebih kurang macam mana dia punya rupa dia. Benda dia tak ganggu orang. Dia just akan duduk dekat dalam bilik tu dan akan tengok bagaimana orang tidur. From there, my brother told me that he experienced this kind of things and he's seen things like this. So I was like, okay, so this things memang betul-betul wujud lah kan. I mean, he's not making up stories kalau kawan-kawan dia bercakap benda yang sama. I think one time my brother's friends and me we played spiritual coins which is something that you shouldn't be doing at all and something yang I nasihatkan jangan buat because benda ni bukan main-main benda ni memang melibatkan nyawa dan boleh membahayakan diri so tolong jangan buat this is basically an experience yang kerja kerja tak betul kita dulu kan me my uncle my brother's friends my brother we played the spiritual coin Okay, kita main benda tu dekat bawah, dekat basement. Okay. Basement dia, inilah kisah cerita basement dia, okay? So, the basement, once you enter into the basement, ada satu jalan spendi. Sepanjang atas ni macam, uh, it's a hallway untuk uh, apa, storeroom. Tepi-tepi ni semua storeroom. Tapi memang besar lah, memang panjang lah tempat ni. Okay, so, depan-depan tu semua storeroom. And then, sepanjang dia ni lagi panjang, storeroom ni. Okay? And then, depan kita ni, Depan hallway yang kita baru masuk ni Ada is the room for washing machine Okay sekarang ni Agaknya apa yang Oz boleh Dapat daripada this place Benda ni kita discover After 7 years of living there And basically Adalah satu tanda salib It's a Christian cross dalam bangunan tu sendiri Di basement bawah Bila bila I bercerita benda ni I pun rasa bulu rumah tu memang naik because benda ni adalah kisah-kisah lama kan macam cerita The Nun tak macam mana suasana dia because I have felt it I pernah masuk church dulu uh, masa muda I experience banyak apa benda-benda macam gini during that time kita secara baru boleh faham rupa ni adalah satu tanda salib masa kita main uh, that game my uncle dia baca doa banyak-banyak lah masa dia main that game kan and tiba-tiba dia nampak ada seorang budak perempuan ni This young girl datang daripada satu corner of this basement uh, Wearing a red dress Tapi tak ada mata uh, Rambut dia blonde, kecil je Rambut dia blonde kena ikat, ponytail Dia tak bercakap Yang my brother punya kawan dah sampai nak terkencing Because dia terlalu takut This thing spoke to my uncle Speaking as in macam bagi my uncle a vision Apa yang berlaku dekat sini This basement is actually a church Zaman dahulu uh, Satu church di mana uh, ialah orang Kristian mayang dan sebagainya dan di situ juga kan biasa kan depan church ada ibu orang Kristian dan perasa tempat kira tanah tu semua adalah tanah perkuburan bayangkanlah church tu telah dibakar oleh orang Yahudi pada zaman dahulu baru kita faham patutlah ada padri patutlah ada that little girl when we knew about it we straight away macam after that kita dah terus tak nak soalkan benda lagi dah and then kita dah tak main dah spiritual coin nothing and here's my personal story of what happened to me with my best friend and my sister there was this time when us three during that time I nak pergi camping so I told my dad papa I nak kena pergi ambil barang kerja dekat Soro And dia kata jangan turun sekarang Sekarang tengah waktu maghrib Waktu tu pukul tujuh So I was like uh, Okay lah tak apalah I mean pergi je lah kan Alah maghrib pun maghrib lah masa tu kan Me my best friend and my little sister My sister was like 4 years old I was like maybe 12 or 13 Something like that lah This is the closest I have ever gotten to Seeing or nearby a ghost lah Kita punya storeroom tu adalah hujung sekali Okay so the longest hallway Tapi hujung sekali sebelah kanan So, kita perlu buka satu lampu ni Lampu ni ada dekat peta tu in the middle of the hallway So, you press the light Light ni akan tutup dalam masa 5 minit That that is standard standard, And then dia akan tutup sendiri Takkan ada orang tutup Okay, tapi ni yang kelakar ni Biasanya kalau kita nak jalan daripada The middle of the hallway To the storeroom Takes only like, I think 30 seconds Okay, tapi sekarang ni kita baru sampai pertengahan Kita jalan, kita buka lampu Dan kita pasang, kita sampai pertengahan Uh, hallway ni nak dah nak yelah lagi setengah nak sampai lah dekat storeroom tiba-tiba as we were all walking lampu tu tutup sendiri and it's only been 15 seconds and I terus pegang tangan my best friend and I'm like what is going on and then dia pun kata I don't know dia pun pengecut juga dia memang takut sangat-sangat and my sister dah grab on my clothes and I'm like 
One, two, three, run. Run pergi masuk dekat storeroom tu kan because itu yang closest. So we run all the way to the storeroom. Dengan menggelaba-gelaba dia nak buka the storeroom door which requires like a crazy crazy key yang susah sangat nak buka and we were like oh my god apa tak boleh buka ni kenapa tak boleh buka ni kan and yang my friend dah ketuk 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 and after dah dapat buka pintu tu we went in lah jenis storeroom ni berlubang-lubang so means macam uh, penjara lah kan macam itu tapi made of kayu lah we inside waktu maghrib kan daripada satu tingkap tu kita boleh nampak cahaya sikit lah lalu dekat dekat hallway tu and I don't know kenapa me and my friend macam takut sangat takut semacam and my friend was like she was praying and I tengah baca doa dengan dengan menggeletar-geletar ni suara tengah baca al-Fatihah I think got like a hallway tu kan I was looking at the hallway and I said Okay apa benda tu <laughs> sejenis figure yang macam padri tu kan dia jauh tapi boleh nampak dia bercahaya yang like astagfirullahalazim apa benda ni I baca, baca, baca doa lagi kuat Dan tengok lagi I kenapa dia makin dekat ni Kenapa macam tadi macam jauh This time it was nearer towards us And then my sister of course budak kecil kan My sister boleh nampak So dia peek out Dia tiba-tiba jerit Hantu, hantu, hantu And I'm like Ya Allah adik janganlah macam gini kan I dah menangis lah My friend pun dah menangis lah My sister lagi tengah mencerit-mencerit Benda tu betul tu dah dekat sangat tau tak? Just like almost nearby the door. Dekat sangat. And I remember that feeling of fear tau. Memang takut sangat lah. Tak pernah rasa macam setakut-takut ni. And then all of a sudden my brother buka pintu yang entrance tu. Dia buka and then lari masuk. Eh kenapa ni? Dia buka lampu. Kenapa ni? I think because he, he hurt us kan. Because our voice memang nyaring betul lah. He came in and he was like what happened? I was like ada, ada benda tau. Ada, there was a ghost literally there. Yang padri tu. And then terus dia kata, tu lah dah cakap waktu maghrib jangan turun bawah kan So me and my friends were crying, trying to calm each other down From there on that was like my experience yang paling panik, yang paling scary in my whole life In which I tak pernah imagine akan sedekat ni lah Itulah basically story what happened in Switzerland dulu And there are many more, many more stories that I can share Tapi itu for next time lah kan Thank you for watching and if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe my channel and also tolong jangan lupa untuk komen dekat bawah sekiranya uh, you all nak dengar cerita-cerita yang lain ataupun nak dengar cover ke whatsoever uh, cerita-cerita masa dekat Switzerland ke yang tak berkaitan dengan hantu pun boleh. Thank you very much. Bye!